Okay, hello. Thanks everyone for being here. It's very late in the day and we are now between you and beverages. Um, so thanks for your patience while we uh, get through this talk. So the concept of remediation can help us think through how researchers engage with the process of creating and interacting with linked open data. This paper asks, how does remediation, specifically that of research data into linked open data, promote new ways of thinking? We mobilize three senses of this keyword, each grounded in examples, um, in examples from the work of building the Linked Infrastructure for Networked Cultural Scholarship, or LINCS. We start with a basic definition to discuss the LINCS team as intermediaries in the research process. In, the, in business or library context, the term is used to describe reformatting data. It helps us think about the LINCS data conversion workflow. And finally, Grusin and Bolter's definition of remediation helps us to analyze two links interfaces for engaging with linked open data. We will conclude, not with answers, but with a provocation about how to make linked open data usable for researchers. LOD is a method of knowledge organization through standards and documentation, enables deep, nuanced connections between data sets that were previously siloed. And adoption of LOD in the cultural heritage sector continues to grow, as we can see from the previous two papers. Alongside galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, GLAM institutions, humanities researchers need to contribute their more specialized data so that the cultural record is not appropriated by commercial interests. We are also aware that these very researchers bring with them different insights, needs, and expectations than those in the GLAM community. So what is LINX? LINX is infrastructure to mobilize Canadian scholarship through the creation, dissemination, and use of linked open data. It allows humanities researchers to interweave their research material meaningfully with data from cultural data publishers in order to transform how we engage with the human record on the semantic web. From the outset, LINX was intended to be national infrastructure with international reach. This very simplified diagram shows the process by which data, uh, researchers' data is converted and then ingested into links. Natural language, semi-structured, or structured source data goes through data cleanup, mapping to the CIDOC CRM ontology, reconciliation with other linked data entities, and finally conversion to LOD. This data is then added to the links triple store and made accessible through APIs and various interfaces. Not only does LINCS work toward what may be provocatively understood as the action of remedying or correcting um, uh, a variety of differently formatted data sets into findable, accessible, interoperable, or reusable, fair, state, but the results of this work, um, sorry, this reworking, allow for researchers and the public to remediate their knowledge through new methods of connection, visualization, and annotation. Members of the LINCS team act as mediators then between researchers, their data as they know it, and what will it become and what it will become once connected to the semantic web. When researchers first decide to work with LINCS, they are asked to fill out a form to prepare for their data intake interview. This form is then reviewed by myself as research board chair, our ontology systems analyst, Aaron Canning, our project manager, Sarah Roger, and our data interface developer, Aliyah Mo. This initial meeting allows us to determine a number of factors about the data set, including its scope and its format, what the researchers are looking to learn from the data, what they want it to be, why they want it to become LOD, and what they will ask of it once it is linked. The full set of interview questions can be found at the link at the bottom here, but even this small selection indicates how thinking about connecting their data to other data sets on the web um, can affect how researchers conceive of their own projects. Notes taken during these interviews reveal that the question, what will you ask of the data once it's linked, begins to reshape researchers' thinking. Not only are they asked to list projects they would like to connect their data to, but they also begin to think about the possibilities that would arise when these data sets are connected. So let's take one of our uh, project partners, our partner projects, as a case study. The Yellow 90s project, led by Lorraine jansen kustra from Toronto Metropolitan University, was one of our original grant partners. The Yellow 90s, or Y90s as we'll call it, is an open access scholarly resource for the study of eight fin de siècle little magazines in the context of their production and reception. In addition to a searchable digital edition of each of the magazines, 
The Y90s provide a critical overview of the title and a scholarly introduction for each volume in the series. When they came to us and first filled out their data intake form, Jansen Koistra and her uh, collaborator, Alison Headley, had already created this data model for the network of people and relationships that built up around the little magazines published in the late Victorian period. Due to this model, we thought it would be a great place to start and get the personography um, into uh, linked data form to contribute to the Lynx triple store. Headley articulated the goal of the Y90s personography, to explore and document the communities of production responsible for the historical little magazines, particularly recovering the social networks of and biographical information about women and marginalized populations in those communities. We were aware then of the, or sorry, that the project developed from an intersectional feminist approach and it wished to surface the lives of women, queer folks, and other marginalized communities whose labor contributed to the cre uh, creation and dissemination of the Yellow 90s publications. Headley and Jensen Koistra wanted the ability to leverage demographic details from other resources. They thought, that they thought of the person as at the very center of their work, and they had concerns about shifting to the CIDOC CRM model as it's an event-centric ontology. One point of connection for them was to, was to the Orlando Project, another DH project on women's writing that was also creating data for links. Conversations with this team suggested the high value for them of broadening their network from the well-known white men, Yeats, Shaw, Beardsley, etc., that dominate the current literature. The links mapping and conversion process was then informed by these insights. Data remediation, a term used by businesses, libraries, and tech companies, involves cleansing, organizing, and migrating data. We note here the discourse of purity in this language, and we reject the implication that the linked open data that links creates is better than the source data provided by the researchers. However, this definition works well in other respects to describe the process through which the researcher datasets move through the links conversion workflow. After the data intake interview, the links ontologist reviews the data and creates a preliminary analysis and mapping, which is brought back to the researchers for review. Uh, during the review meetings, the ontologist focuses on discussing not just the proposed changes to the data structure, but the changes to the meaning of that data, um, the, one, the restructuring and alignment with the links ontologies and vocabularies entails. The review meeting is an opportunity then to show researchers how linked data structures may be able to help them more clearly represent and articulate their data or the information required to get at the heart of their research questions. These three steps, analysis, mapping, and review, are repeated as many times as necessary to come to that mapping that researchers feel represents their data well. Early in the LINCS project, we decided to adopt CIDOC CRM as our core ontology. This event-centric ontology is widely used for cultural heritage data. Remediation in the Y90s data then meant not only changing its form from XML, HTML to LOD, but also shifting it from a person-driven model to an event-centric ontology. So in this mapping, although the person entities are visually centered, they, are, they have almost no direct properties, such as modeling someone as the creator of a text. Instead, those properties are mediated through activities, as you can see with the creation activities on the lower left side, and it's often done through multiple events. A review of the mapping uh, with the Y90s team resulted in a few questions, notably around the areas of avatars, pen names, occupations, and marriage. Overall, however, the researchers were happy with the mapping and its structure, and they could still see the person at the center. Uh, this mapping helped the researchers with their goal of connecting to other data sets through the use of vocabularies. Up at the top here, you can see where the cultural forms vocabulary was employed to help uh, describe the gender and gender context of the people in the Y90s personography. After the initial consultation, the researchers noted that this mapping translated the data with more specificity and nuance than they thought would be possible, and met their goal of being interoperable while remaining true to their project. Once this project, once this process rather, was complete for the Y90s data, it was transformed into LOD using X3ML and then entered the triple store for exploration through Link's interfaces and APIs. 
it is essential to attend to the changes in meaning brought to the data through the conversion process. This is not solely a technical process where the data is cleaned, reorganized, and converted, but a human, interactive, and ideological one that affects how researchers view and work with their data and how other people can link to it. Conversion, as Alamang notes here, um, oh sorry, conversion is the creation and implementation of a data model. As Alamang notes here, models mediate among multiple viewpoints. It matters then whether a data set is modeled like this or like this. Until it has been ingested, Lynx researchers only see the models of their data. So Lynx provides several interfaces afterwards to help them interact with their linked open data, and all of these interfaces face the challenge of making it so that the researcher can recognize and work with their data, but also see the nuances and points of connection that they were promised. Structural remediation of data as LOD then has profound implications that go beyond the tidying up of data to fundamental aspects of how data enters and supports the research process. If remediation of data sets into linked open data creates different versions of those data sets that shifts how researchers conceive of their research, it also provides a new starting point for future researchers who can look back at previous forms of the data for comparison and who are invited by the open license of the data to remediate it again with their own insights and ideas. Remediation, as popularized by Bolter and Grusin, involves a tension between two things that often happen at the same time, immediacy, when the user is quickly subsumed into a new space by way of a screen or something similar, which recalls elements of older media, and hypermediacy, users' awareness that they are interacting with layers of media represented in a variety of ways in a single place, such as a website or a newspaper cover. All digital interfaces, of course, remediate data, but many DH interfaces seek to represent the data as data, albeit, mediated, not raw, we know that, um, rather than using data to produce a representation of something else. And that's the question that we're focusing on here. In digital media, then, the goal of many interface developers is that their work should not be apparent so as to promote immediacy. In a lot of DH work and in links, on the other hand, the role of the technical team that sees the researcher's data through the conversion workflow needs to become invisible in the interface. That is, the data has to work, it has to be clean, it can't you know, cause problems. But also, for the data to be effectively remediated as linked open data using graphical user interfaces, we have the same kind of tension between immediacy and hypermediacy for the data to be usable for research. Immediacy can be thought of in terms of the intuitiveness and usability of the interface's presentation of the data, whereas to be critically aware of how the data structures are interacting with the interface requires a form of hypermediacy. The two interfaces that we're concentrating on here, Research Space and the Links Context plugin, navigate this tension in different ways. And in Bolter and Grusin's theories, we have, um, through Bolter and Grusin's theories, we've arrived at some insights into the ways in which they work and uh, perhaps some ways in which they may not. So Research Space uh, is an open source system, and our version of Research Space is not quite out yet, um, but you'll see a sort of uh, preview of it here. The platform attempts to uh, achieve immediacy through the visual rhetoric of a web interface with its familiar tabs and hyperlinks, to, and it, in essence, uh, creates a browser within a browser. We've learned from user testing that this can challenge some users, although others like this affordance, understanding that moving between tabs within one uh, web browser tab itself sort of simplifies and keeps their work all in one space. Hypermediacy is present in the juxtaposition of diverse information types. Tabs can be side to side or moved horizontally or vertically so the user can see different aspects of their data and interact with these different views in parallel. What of the data then? Researchers expect to see something familiar in their data even if it's been remediated through conversion. Though there are some researchers within Links with a deep knowledge of linked data and the semantic web, Links aims also to serve those who will not learn the intricacies of CDOC CRM or linked data um, Sparkle query uh, languages like Sparkle. Uh, sorry, linked, linked data query languages uh, like Sparkle. They're relying on Links to provide uh, graphical user interfaces with accessible icons, imagery, and language in order to be able to work with their data in its new state. 
Shifting back to our case study, recall that two of the research goals of the Yellow 90s project were to connect to other data sets and to surface race and gender minorities within the network of people. So Vernon Lee is a woman author who published as part of the Yellow Book Circle. The Yellow 90s prosopography and Orlando Project data have been reconciled so that the entity card for Lee in the Yellow 90s and in Orlando reflects assertions from both projects. So we have triples about the same entity from both sources. The current personography data about Lee in research space includes details on her birth, death, employment, and intimate relationships and friendships with women. Research space creates immediacy through the organized view of information on the entity card, which you're seeing now, which mediates the data, hopping over multiple intermediate entities in the CDOC structure, as you can see in the statement of her lesbianism. But then when we move into what research space calls a knowledge map, hypermediacy comes into play to reveal those intermediate relationships from the CDOC ontology, as well as a text snippet from Orlando from which this information was derived. This kind of view supports researchers' work with their data as data. Links wanted to create a very accessible interface that wouldn't require going to the link site at all, but let the data travel with the user across the web. Currently known as the Links Context plugin and available for, through the Google Play Store if you volunteer for testing, this tool works as an overlay to the web, and it can be uh, turned on or off with a single click. Once engaged, the plugin invites you to select entities detected on the page and explore what kinds of information Links has about them. This interface creates immediacy in keeping the user within the browser environment and presenting the data in a playful, interactive way that again skips over intermediate events but it also supports hypermediacy by allows, allowing users to link out to a less mediated view of properties within research space. Right. One appeal of the semantic web is that it will break down the walls of data silos, but to what extent do researchers want that? There are issues of trust with the data. We've just been talking a lot about provenance. Um, how far and how granular does the flagging of the source graphs, the different sources of individual projects within links, and if we pull data from beyond links, need to be? Another appeal is the ability of the semantic web to allow data to interact but retain the ability to represent or surface contradictions or tensions in understandings or epistemologies of the topic. As a feminist infrastructure collaborating with other feminist projects, we're also aware of the need to represent labor not only of the Lynx team, but of researchers such as Michelle Marr and Janice Smith-Elford of the Ad Archive, who ground their work and commitment to building a linked data archive that renders visible our mediative labor. So how do we navigate that productive tension between remediation as immersion and remediation as hypermediacy when it comes to linked open data? Immediacy is achievable with robust linked data. Indeed, Rob Sanderson and the Linked Art Group are all about creating linked open usable data, in his phrase, based on CDOC CRM for GLAM institutions. Such remediated data, however, will lack that other kind of transparency that researchers want, in some contexts at least. A, re a relatively direct communication of the structure and details of the data as data so that we can think through it and its interface effects. The ideologically laden interface rhetorics of minimalism and interface transparency may be more comfortable in the short term for researchers but impede their ability to engage critically with their data. Immediacy is important to usability, but needs for researchers to be balanced by hypermediation. Hyper Juxtaposing the two provides a space for user agency and engagement. The loud model involves making data usable by front-end developers so that they can create customized views of the data that, produces, that produce immediacy through targeted user journeys. This suits GLAM institutions building public-facing collection interfaces, but it does not address researchers who want to engage with data structures and their nuances. Linked open usable data begs the question, usable for whom? So one of our big questions going forwards, and our question for you today, is what does linked open usable research data look like for the spectrum of users from novices to experts and for cultural researchers testing the potential of linked open data? Thank you. <laughs>